Tea time. Hello everyone, welcome back to Karate Time. I'm Simon and on today's subject I want to talk about tradition. So first of all we've got our beverage of the day which is really appropriate because I've got a traditional Chinese teapot with some imported Chinese green tea so I'll be enjoying that one as we go. Tradition is a big subject for us to cover, but I'm going to try and keep this to a, a very fine point, hopefully. It's a bit of an interesting one, this, because we've got uh, a lot of martial art clubs, karate clubs, and in, in the last video I also described myself as a traditional martial artist. And the problem is, is that tradition can become a bit of a dirty word. How can I put this? It's a... It's a label that many clubs, individuals, organisations use proudly, and, and rightly so. They, they say that they are a traditional karate or other martial art club. And I understand that. And it's a label that they, they put out there um, proudly. Sometimes even in the name of their actual organisations. The problem is, is that tradition can become a bit of an anachronism. And you end up with a, a self-defeating approach by labelling yourself traditional. You put off a lot of people that see traditional martial arts as akin to what you get in films. Um, you get the, uh, the, the, the geese, the uniforms, you get the people training under waterfalls and hitting bamboo and, and so on. And it's something that many people see as ineffective. Uh, traditional martial arts don't do well in MMA is the thing that you hear all the time. And this is where the problem lies, is traditions are invented. Every tradition has to start somewhere. So, for example, uh, karate. Traditional gi. 140, 150 years old. It had to start somewhere, and it was started by Jigoro Kano, founder of judo. He invented the judo gi. Uh, it was designed as a practical thing. It was more comfortable to wear than the, well, maybe not more comfortable, more practical to wear in training than a hakama and kimono. And it was, it would stand up to rigors of being pulled and pushed and thrown. And it was very much that sort, that invention. Uh, then in karate, it was adopted because yeah, other people were using it in judo. So we ended up with it in karate. And a, if you look at a traditional karate gi now, it follows the same shape, but it's different. You've got kata versions, shorter trousers, and they call them the Japanese cut as well, longer skirt points, shorter sleeves. And then you've got the competition gis, which are eight, nine ounces, really lightweight. Uh, they typically are quite baggy in comparison, elastic waists. And so on. So these traditional items that we have are not necessarily as traditional as we might think. What other things have we got? Okay, there's um, a great one, a great example. Belts. Belts in karate. They would, they've not been a thing forever. We tend to think of tradition in martial arts as something that has always been done. There's been nothing changed. And that's where the mistake is. The belt system in karate again, was an invention by Jigoro Kano from Judo. And he actually got the idea for a belt system or a hierarchy system from the British. He got it from our public school system. He saw the way they had, um, uh, what were they called, uh, houses. They had, um, the public schools had houses. You had your uh, students assigned to the house. Anyone who's fan of Harry Potter, yeah, Gryffindor, Slytherin, etc. that system. You have them, you have your head boy, you have your head girl, you have the, the head of the house, then you have your headmaster. You have a tiered hierarchy. And he introduced this to judo because he was trying to get judo into the education system. He wanted judo to become part of the Japanese 
uh, education and development of people. And so to have a graded system that allowed him to map what was going on and see development, that fit the idea of education. So it's not actually that traditional. Again, we're talking 120, 150 years old, somewhere in that region, if that. And of course, what always happens? People see an idea and say, that was quite good. And they take it and they borrow it and they use it. And so now in karate, we have a belt system. But what's the traditional system? The belts change all the time. Every organisation has its own belt structure. There's some similarities, but if they change, does it matter? Not really. I suppose the biggest problem is, is this, that uh, you know, they start to devalue. So this is where tradition does actually become quite an important thing. I mentioned in the previous video that tradition is more important when it comes to maintaining the values of something. If, if those values are still relevant, that is important. There's, it's very easy to say our, tradi our values are traditional, our training is traditional. But if those are no longer relevant, then, then they should be parked to one side and we should develop with the times. I don't think that's the case in karate. I think the the, the purpose behind Shotokan at the very least, uh, you know, others have their own similar, you know, their own um, variations on their beliefs and their values. But from a Shotokan karate point of view, we've got the Dojo Kun, we've got the Niji Kun. Uh, speaking of which, one of my uh, club members is currently doing very good uh, series write up on the Niji Kun at the moment on the blog. So please have a look at that. Where we've uh, we've covered the first two, or he's covered the first two so far, but those values of not striking first, or respect, and discipline, and that's discipline in a not a negative sense. It's it's more about control and uh, basically being a good member of of your society. Those are traditions I think we should hold on to, but the problem is, is that tradition, as I said, is an invention, it's, and and. It's just um, every every club, every group, every organisation will slowly create their own traditions. Uh, a perfect example is the black belt. Uh, I've actually got a, a blog post coming up about this very soon, but let's start a little bit about it here. When we think about uh, the black belt, it's typically viewed incorrectly perhaps as the as, as the ultimate goal and yet most people who get the black belt understand that it really is just a point where your your foundation training has been completed um one of my in fact my instructor often talks about it being like everything up to that black belt is the process of going through primary school secondary school university and then when you actually get your black belt, that's right, okay, you've got your qualifications, now you've got to go into the real world and learn to use it. It's a bit like that with the black belt. But one of the, the traditions that uh, is out there is the use of a silk black belt. And the purpose of this is that as, as you wear the belt, the silk slowly fades away, and you end up with uh, a belt that has faded back to white, which traditionally is symbolic of the circle taking us back to white belt to show that we've never stopped learning and it's a wonderful wonderful image and it's one that i purport as well i i use that idea i say that it demonstrates this idea that we never stop learning but there's no proof that that's what it was intended for there's actually no, there's nothing, there's no evidence. But is that a bad thing? No, either way I look at it is this is a relatively new tradition. And as long as the, the purpose behind it remains, I hate to use this word, but as long as it remains pure, then you can see that the understanding is there. And now the only reason I say it like that is that this new tradition of a belt showing that we never stop learning is supposed to be 
um, how can we put this, a, a humbling thing. It's, it's to show humbleness and not an arrogance. Um, and I don't wish to uh, sort of decry the a, a lot of other martial arts, but they are very quick to use the title of master and grandmaster. Um, and this is not to say that they are themselves arrogant in any way. It, again, it's a tradition that's used. The Korean martial arts use the terms master and grandmaster. But it does seem to be a case of those that use the term grandmaster uh, or any of these titles, they tend to be uh, more common in, in, in the West. Um, more so, I've got to say, in the United States of America, from what I've seen, is people are very quick to give themselves these titles. Uh, if anyone's ever watched Master Ken, or if you haven't watched Master Ken, look him up, he's hilarious. He, he basically embodies um, all of these... Well, I don't want to use the terms because it won't be friendly for children in this video. These, these idiots that, that are teaching themselves, are showing no touch knockouts and they're, they're tenth dan dragon masters, you know, with red and gold belts and so on. What they have done is they've cheapened a traditional approach of the belt system. And what this is, what this is doing is it's making the traditional martial arts become viewed unfavorably compared to combat sport or mixed martial arts and the various other options that are out there. Uh, this is why you see Krav Maga uh, labeling themselves as it's sort of you know they're not a not a traditional martial art. They are a combat form or they are a self defense form or a protection form because they're trying to disassociate themselves with tradition. And yet, and I'm not an expert in this, I'm happy for any any corrections, but if you look at what Krav Maga teaches, it's not far off what would be learned in a good jiu-jitsu club. And I, uh, that's not a problem. You know, there's only so many ways that you can fight with your hands and your feet. You know, there's, there's not going to be many improvements over the last thousand, if you, you know, few thousand years. So anyway, but back to the sort of main topic at hand is that this idea of tradition being an invention is quite an important one. If you're going to have traditional elements, you've got to be careful with what that tradition is and why are you holding on to it? What's the purpose of it? And this is a huge, huge thing that we can discuss. We could discuss this for hours and hours. And I probably haven't breathed in yet because it's such a big topic. Um, but how can you how can you take a traditional label and display it proudly without getting lost amongst the the rubbish that's out there? That's the problem. That's the dilemma. So I'd still say I'm a traditional martial artist, but I'd have to be careful now with who I say it, where I say it, and it may require a lot more explanation than it used to. And this does make, uh, make things quite difficult. It does, it does make things difficult. Is there anything else on tradition I want to talk about? No, I just want to remember, I just want everyone to remember that traditions are invented. Start your own, you know, as, as long as the purpose behind them is laudable and you don't lose the purpose behind it, then those traditions can continue and hopefully well those don't think of them as tradition don't try and create a tradition try to do something that is good practical enjoyable uh, beneficial you know all of the other issues and if you can do this if you can come up with those then these are things that other people will start to do your own students will start to do you might find that your own students, who maybe eventually become teachers, they start to it, they start to carry on that legacy. At which point, a tradition has been created. And ideally, this is where tradition needs to uh, be 
publicly viewed differently. Things that are traditional should be seen as things that have held on and withstood the test of time because they were good, because they were useful, because they worked, they had benefits to society or to the individual. Tradition shouldn't be there as something that that hangs on, that that restricts or constrains. And, you know, I mean, like I said, I've got a traditional Chinese teapot. Is it any different to another teapot? A few moments later. So think about how you use these things. Enjoy your tea. Let me know in the comments if you've got any thoughts on these ideas of tradition. I also want to know what beverage you're drinking as well, what brew you have. And other than that, take care and I'll see you next time. Take care, folks. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Karate Time. So on today's... No. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Karate Time. I'm Simon and... Traditional martial artist, the difficulty is.